some business to take care of and I, I'm about to go to church right now and you can tell by that slinky ass rhythm underneath me it's not just any kind of church it's a church of what's happening now that's where we're headed yeah yeah if you found yourself moved so far you might want to start moving now You can just move in your chair. That's perfectly good prayerfulness. So here's the thing. Have you ever laid awake at night or laid awake early in the morning or come to a fit of sanity or lucidity that you did not seek and in the midst of all of that flurry of unwanted certainty, did you look off into the murky distance and say to yourself, How the hell did it get like this? I'm guessing you have. Me too. And there's a few things that will prompt you to wonder, how did it get like this? You turn in any talk show radio, you're gonna say, how the hell did it get like this? You're gonna listen to one of those 570 channels with nothing on, and you're gonna say to yourself, how did it get like this? You're gonna come into a restaurant and you'll be confronted by a thing, an apparition from doom itself called a children's menu. And you must ask yourself, how did it get like this? And you flip to the back of that menu and dear God, there's a senior's menu there too. Same food, same prices, same portions. How did it get like this? You're driving into town or you're driving out of town and you're confronted by the prophetic oracle there by the side of the road in the form of a sign. And what does it say? In bold letters that you cannot miss, it says, be prepared to stop. And there's no stopping. How did it get like this? It may not shock you to hear that I have an idea as to how it got like this. But if you're not careful, you're gonna end up thinking, well, you know, we are the crown of creation after all, and so we're just having a bad day. But we'll get over it. We got Egon Musk, whatever the hell his name is. He's taking care of our shit. He'll have us to Mars in no time, we'll be fine. And there's immortality junkies out there that are socking the millions into it, finding the immortality pill. We're done with mortality, apparently. Be prepared to stop as for suckers. So, how did it get like this? Well, if you're not careful, you flip the whole thing on its ass. You'll end up saying something like, humans, what, do you, what can you do? I mean, we are darkness incarnate. We are the ass end of evolution. You could end up thinking that. But I ask you to consider the following. Misanthropy is not the same thing as having a conscience. We are the only life form apparently in this world who's come up with the solution to the problems of our age being the elimination of humans. Something to pay attention to. Misanthropy, not the same as conscience. So, did something happen? I figured something happened. It's not that big a deal at the time. It never is. But because that something happened, there's some things that didn't happen. And before you know it, well, we got the West. And we got you. And we got me. And we're not an inevitably occurring anything. We're a consequence. We're in the wake of what was not intended. So, here we go. You had an education, so did I. I will bet anything your education did not include the following, an in-depth and absolutely mandatory investigation as to the deep spiritual valence of the people from whom you come. What the? What kind of curriculum is it 
when the people it's inflicted upon cannot find themselves or their old people in it. On the other hand, we were led down the garden path of civilization, were we not in our education, and obliged to understand ourselves as having come in some fundamental and complementary way from the cradle of civilization, its very self. So I ask you this, how has it came to pass that the Romans have achieved such wicked market penetration into the modern age? Because they have, and they're nowhere, but they're everywhere. They haven't been a thing for, what, 1800 years or some damn thing? And they're still around. And in your education, you're obliged to learn their language, their religion, their myths, their fables, their architecture, their banking system, their legal system. You're living with it every day. I know what you're thinking right now. Dude, I did not come here for a history lesson. It's called Nights of Grief and Mystery. <laughs> not grief and history, isn't it? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you say very, as in I'm not very interested, the word very comes from the Romans too. You can't get away from it. That's right. So, I went to a school that bragged using the word veritas. That's all they said in their emblem. Veritas. The truth. So, here's how they did it, folks. The Romans were wickedly successful at war. Everybody knows that. But we're not sure how, though, if we don't study it. I'll tell you now, quick and dirty, here's how they did it. Oh, they, they were successful, and they were, but they didn't kill everybody they defeated. Everybody they fought was pretty much what you'd know today as an indigenous person. That's right. That's what you came from. Those of you who got any ancestry in Europe at all, this is for you now. This is about those people I started talking to when we began hours ago. So. They didn't kill them all. The bad guys never really do. But the geniuses among them figure out a solution to the ones they can't finish. So they gave them a very simple choice. Now, you have fought on behalf of your homeland and on behalf of your families and your loved ones. It's very honorable and you failed. Now, we can kill you right now and you will die as an honorable pagan. No problem, no questions asked. Just so you understand it though, after we're done with you, we will have our way with your women and your children and your land. Or you can join us. Yeah. And if you join us, you're going to have to work off the debt that you have now incurred by virtue of us saving you. And here's how you do it. It's simple and it's easy. We're going to employ you as honorary and immediate Roman citizens, now soldiers, and we're going to ship you to the edge of the known universe and beyond, and you will become the Roman Empire out there. Let us know what you'd like to do. And most of your old people and mine took the deal and shipped away they were, and they never saw their homeland again. They were still alive, sort of, but they lost their bearings and they lost their way and they became some kind of mongrel monolith known as Rome. That's the unauthorized story that you're never told at school. The Roman Empire was peopled and enforced by people who didn't even know where Rome was, who'd lost everything that they knew themselves to be. And that loss constituted the Roman Empire, which is supposed to be the seat of every civilized idea the West has ever managed. Mercy. Here's the other thing they didn't do. They didn't convert one indigenous person to their religion, not one. Their genius was they converted the land instead. And if you doubt me, go to New York City in your country. You will find emblazoned on the wall there the following. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. As if this is the evocation universally of peace. Do you know, from the land's point of view, there is no difference between a sword and a plowshare. 
looks the same, works the same. But this is what the Romans did. They replaced culture with agriculture. They broke the land and broke the old people's way of living with their gods in the bargain. For that's where their gods were. And that's who their gods were. Lo and behold, they become the enforcers of the Roman Empire and the victims of it at the same time. And civilization becomes a ghost city. And Rome, a mongrel monolith of ruined indigenosities, lumped one upon the other, trying to stay alive. Within two or three generations, what are their grandchildren thinking about themselves? Or oh, they have this mysterious mix. They have some nostalgia for another kind of time that they never got to live, that they've only heard about and will never see. And they have a boiling kind of self-hatred, being neither quite fish nor fowl, some kind of mixed blood, nothing in particular. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds eerily contemporary, doesn't it? But this is where the practice comes from. Because it was done to the people who did it on these shores. And they learned very well indeed. And lo and behold, does it not come to pass that Rome, allegedly the mother of every civilized thing, turns out to be the child of absolutely nothing at all. <laughs>